Hello everyone, today we'll take a look at the best DSLR cameras in the market for 2021. I made this list based on my personal opinion and I'll try to help you find the right one for your needs. To see the most up-to-date prices and find out more information about these cameras, you can check out the links in the description below. Before we start, I have a question for you guys. What is the reason you're looking for DSLR cameras today? Let me know in the comments. Number 5. Canon EOS Rebel T8i – Best for Most People The Canon EOS Rebel T8i is a 24-megapixel DSLR camera that's compatible with the company's EF and EFS mount lenses. It has an optical viewfinder, but it also has a usable and responsive touchscreen interface and live view experience that's a match for the company's mirrorless camera options. Compared to its predecessor, on the inside, while the sensor resolution and sensitivity range are unchanged, a faster image processor allows a modest increase in burst performance. It's now rated at 7 frames per second through the viewfinder, or 7.5 FPS in live view mode, up from 6 FPS in the T7i. Canon has also added support for 4K movie capture, although this comes with several limitations including a significant focal length crop, contrast detection autofocus and a fixed 24fps frame rate. Although its body is plastic, the Canon T8i is very solid in hand, with no creaks or flexing. It's also pretty light and compact for a DSLR. The main controls are well placed and easy to locate by touch. When it comes to image quality, as an affordable camera aimed at entry-level photographers, it's good enough but won't win any awards. Overall, the Canon EOS Rebel T8i is well-built with comfortable ergonomics and provides solid image quality for users that prefer an optical viewfinder. Number 4. Nikon D3500 – Best for Beginners The Nikon D3500 is a 24-megapixel entry-level DSLR with an APS-C CMOS sensor that's cheaper, lighter, and has a longer battery life than the D3400 that it replaced. It was designed with the new photographer in mind and features a guide mode that will essentially teach you how to shoot in various situations. The D3500 is over two years old, but its age counts in its favor when it comes to price. It's now available for a lot less than its original asking price, making it a great choice for beginners who are looking to take a step up from point-and-shoot photography. Of course, the D3500 isn't perfect, as you'd expect at this price. The main drawbacks are the lack of 4K video capture, some cost-cutting with the external controls, and the absence of touchscreen functionality. The D3500 has a 1550 shot battery life, and it does compensate for the lack of a touchscreen with a handy guide mode for beginners, which takes you through the process of creating effects like a blurred background. It's a great way for inexperienced shooters to understand manual settings and start building their confidence and knowledge. The D3500's 24.2 megapixel sensor produces impressive results, although you'll want to invest in some additional lenses to really see its potential. Overall, for the novice looking to take their first steps in photography, the D3500 ticks an awful lot of boxes. Number 3. Canon EOS Rebel SL3 – Best Budget Option First-time DSLR owners, families, and picture-taking enthusiasts on a limited budget will appreciate the Canon EOS Rebel SL3's price, ease of use, and built-in guidance. There are enough features to allow those interested to explore all facets of photography, while learning about fundamentals such as shutter speed, aperture, and depth of field via the onboard help system. But you can just as easily use it as a point-and-shoot camera. Vloggers will likely make this their go-to camera thanks to its side-hinged, fully articulated touchscreen, and there's a 3.5mm microphone jack to ensure higher quality audio for videos. One of the smallest and lightest DSLRs on the market, the Canon EOS Rebel SL3 measures 4.82 by 3.65 by 2.75 inches and weighs 15.84 ounces with battery and card. Although it's light, there's enough heft to the body that it feels well-balanced, even when the kit lens is fully extended. Overall, the Canon EOS Rebel SL3 is a perfectly pleasing camera to use, with good handling, operation as expected, a nice image quality, and the responsive touchscreen, fast startup time, and excellent dual-pixel CMOS AF system all help to make it a very capable all-rounder. Number 2. Canon EOS 90D – Best All-Round The Canon EOS 90D is positioned as the ultimate general-purpose camera, Suitable for an extremely wide range of subjects ranging from family memories to action sports, from the streets to the beaches and anywhere else on this planet. 
While this is a very mature, refined and feature-packed camera model, it is simple for even beginners to use. It has a huge list of high-performing features that position it as a mid-range model, precisely what advanced amateurs and even semi-professional photographers are looking for. Along with its pro-grade features, the 90D's price point is highly appealing, especially to the wedding and portrait market. This is a perfect camera choice for those interested in taking their photography skills to the next level. There's something else worth pointing out, too. The EOS 90D uses Canon's dual-pixel CMOS AF system as used to great effect on its mirrorless cameras, so when you switch the EOS 90D to live view mode, it's at no autofocus disadvantage at all compared to a mirrorless camera. In fact, you could say that the EOS 90D is the equal of any mirrorless camera, but with the advantage of an optical viewfinder. The bottom line is that if I had to pick a single do-everything-well DSLR camera that does not cost a fortune, the 90D would be my recommendation. Number 1. Nikon D850 – Best High-End Camera Nikon's high-resolution camera body shook up the industry once again, this time with a strong punch, making the Nikon D850 the most versatile DSLR on the market. Thanks to its 45.7-megapixel sensor with a native ISO sensitivity range of 64 to 25,600, upgraded 153-point autofocus system, advanced 181,000-pixel RGB metering system, 7fps continuous shooting speed that can be bumped up to 9fps with a battery grip, a fully weather-sealed construction, and a bunch of other hardware and software upgrades, Nikon managed to pull out a camera that can satisfy every photography need, from landscapes and architecture to sports and wildlife. The Nikon D850 delivers all the image quality, handling, and features I love on the D810, and then some. Its ability to capture the finest detail is exceptional, and its continuous shooting speed is remarkable for a camera with this resolution. Offering an impressive 45.7 megapixels of resolution, 7 FPS burst shooting, full width 4K video, and a focusing system derived from the flagship D5, it looks as though Nikon's thrown just about everything you've got into the D850 and priced it well to boot. Competitors with similar spec megapixel counts such as the Sony a7R II and Canon EOS 5D SR may be cheaper at this point in their lifetimes, but they also fall short of the D850 in a number of ways that may make a difference in the way you shoot. Definitely one of the best, if not the best, DSLR camera out there. Buying Guide Lenses One of the most important characteristics to consider when choosing your ideal DSLR is its compatible system of lenses. Lenses are somewhat arguably the most important tools for elevating the actual quality of imagery and can be the designing factor between professionally rendered photographs and average snapshots. Since the choice of a DSLR directly affects the type of lenses being used, this is the first crucial step. Take into consideration any currently owned lenses and whether they are compatible with different DSLRs of interest. Lenses often end up being the constant investment over time in regard to photography equipment, with camera bodies fluctuating more quickly. Sensor Size Your camera's sensor is far more important than your camera's megapixel count. All the DSLRs currently on the market have more than enough pixels to satisfy most people's needs, so it pays not to get caught up in this megapixel myth. You have two main choices when it comes to DSLR image sensors – APS-C or Full Frame. APS-C sensors are smaller than full-frame sensors, making use of the central portion of the lens only. With an APS-C sensor camera, you get an effect of shooting with a longer lens than you're actually using. Full-frame sensors are typically found in professional-level DSLR cameras and serious enthusiast models. Serious photographers tend to favor full-frame cameras because they use the whole of the lens and keep the focal length exactly the same as if you were using the lens on a traditional 35mm camera. Which brand? The two major manufacturers of DSLRs are Canon and Nikon. Canon holds the largest market share, around 45% as of 2010, with Nikon following with 30%. Both make cameras along the entire spectrum, from point-and-shoots to high-end DSLRs. By choosing a Canon or Nikon camera, you'll find the wider selection of compatible lenses and accessories, both brand name and third-party. Canon and Nikon both build solid cameras that function well, and each have their own pros and cons. It's generally agreed upon that Nikon's have better build quality and focusing, while Canon has a better selection of lenses. They each seem to render color differently as well. Your best bet in choosing will probably come in trying out each brand and seeing which one feels better to you, so don't get peer pressured.